here's a list of Pentagon approved no-go areas. Afghanistan will obviously come up, but just play it cool and try not to get into any tight corners. A renowned nuclear physicist who through a terrible accident was gifted with extraordinary powers, capable of bending matter to his will. Today, the world knows him as Dr. Manhattan. Welcome. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Ms. Black, you have the first question. Dr. Manhattan, as you know, the doomsday clock is a symbolic clock face analogizing humankind's proximity to extinction, midnight representing the threat of nuclear war. As of now, it stands at four minutes to midnight. Would you agree that we're that close to annihilation? My father was a watchmaker. He abandoned it when Einstein discovered that time is relative. I would only agree that a symbolic clock is as nourishing to the intellect as a photograph of oxygen to a drowning man. So you're saying there is no danger? Even in a world without nuclear weapons, there would still be danger. <coughs> then would you say, as so many claim, that you are in fact a god, given that you see the past and future simultaneously? I can only see my own past, my own future. I am not omniscient. Doug Roth, your question. Speaking of your past, Dr. Manhattan, do you remember a man named Wally Weaver? Yes. We were both physicists together at the Gila Flats research base. He died of cancer. He was a good man. How about Edgar Jacobi, also known as the supervillain Mola? You encountered him several times in the 60s, battles, conflicts. Did you know that he has cancer as well? I wasn't told. And what about General Anthony Randolph? He was your handler when you first started working for the government. Cancer. You're suggesting I was the cause. From where I'm standing, it's starting to look pretty conclusive. Even if that's the case, it's irrelevant. A live human body and a deceased human body have the same number of particles. Structurally, there's no difference. All right, let's settle down, please. 